When GridServe opened the world's first electric forecourt in December 2020, it changed how everyone thought about EV travel. Maybe instead of just charging in a dark corner of a car park at the single rapid charger that you'd need to hope was working, you could have a dedicated facility that was absolutely dedicated to EV charging. More chargers than you're ever going to need and all the facilities that you would expect. Since then, the work they've been doing on the motorway network to revitalize the electric highway has been the main focus of everybody's attention. But today, I'm delighted to announce that the sequel has arrived and I'm here at the opening of the Norwich Electric Forecourt, the second electric forecourt in the world. First thing you notice about the Norwich Electric Forecourt, if you visited the original one in Braintree that is, is just how much smaller a footprint it has. Dubbed the Compact Electric Forecourt by GridServe, they've managed to build an equivalent facility on land 50% of the size. This has been achieved of course by putting the chargers underneath the building, a very clever design that saves space, delivers that all important weather protection people are always calling out for but also provides more flexibility than you might think. There seems to be plenty of length on the cables for all types of charge ports in all types of positions and sufficient space behind where you park for longer vehicles or those towing a trailer, for example, to charge without blocking the whole place up. With 36 chargers, that's 22 350 kilowatt rapid chargers for any compatible vehicle, eight Tesla superchargers and six 22 kilowatt AC connectors, it once again takes the title of the biggest rapid charging hub in the country. A record that every provider seems to insist on beating every time they open a new site like this, which I think is absolutely fantastic. And I definitely think they need to keep up this uh, tradition of trying to one-up each other by having the biggest site because it can only be a good thing for the driver in the, the long run. Everyone's catered for here. CCS is obviously holding the majority, but there are six Chatamo connectors for those that need them and the all-important AC for Zoe drivers or those that are planning on staying a little bit longer, which is really good to see that no matter what type of electric vehicle you drive, you can charge it at the Norwich Electric Forecourt. Accessibility seems high on the agenda as well. To roughly quote one of the speakers from GridServe at the event, if it works for people with disabilities, it can work for everyone else too. Four of the 22 DC charging bays are extra wide accessible bays with curb free access to the entrances, screens on the chargers are mounted low down, the connectors are mounted quite low down and thought seems to be put into the spacing of the bollards around the charger and the bump stop that you always find at a rapid. Now that sort of street furniture can be a bit problematic but it seems to me like they've it would be better without it. They've, they've got to put it there to protect the equipment and just in case people sort of nudge into it and stuff like that. But they seem to have at least put some thought into it. One of the AC bays has a very similar setup, so those using AC aren't forgotten about either. It has step-free access to the entrance via the pedestrian crossing. And I'm no expert in accessibility, so I would welcome your thoughts in the comments on this for sure. But it seems to me like it's the most care I've ever seen any charging provider take for a new installation. It's a huge issue that needs to be addressed by the industry and this installation looks to me at least like it's moving in the right direction and it's gone a fair way to make it as inclusive as possible for those that require more accessible charging. The electric forecourt does more than just providing somewhere to charge as well. Since the Braintree electric forecourt opened in 2020, the district has seen a significant increase in EV registrations with an 82% growth. That's more than double the UK's average rate of EV growth. And that's one of the key benefits. 
It's open to visitors without electric cars so they can find out more about charging and about the cars themselves. GridServe, of course, also operate an EV leasing business and hold regular test drive events, which is an important step to educate and influence people who are as of yet on the fence when it comes to the benefits of electric vehicles. As an added bonus to celebrate the launch of the Norwich Electric Forecourt, they're offering a thousand miles of free charging for every car they lease until the end of June. So I suspect they'll be converting a fair few interested people into EV drivers in the Norwich area fairly shortly. What I'd love to see from them is fully inclusive packages, a little bit like what Onto offer. So say you lease a car for 12,000 miles a year, they give you a charging card that would cover the public charging cost. This could be a great move for those reliant on public charging, for those unsure about the costs involved, or for those company car drivers that struggle a bit with the five pence per mile HMRC fuel rate for electric cars. An all-inclusive fuel card that was part of the lease would overcome all of those issues and if it works at every motorway service station, as well as at the electric forecourts, well, that'd be pretty hard to beat, wouldn't it? I'm sure someone at GridServe is probably already working on it, but I think that would definitely be a good way for them to go and make their leasing massively stand out attractive versus other deals that are on the market. With regards to the electric highway and the motorway network, uh, again, Torrington made a, a great presentation about the, the, the sort of the state of the nation with regards to the, the upgrade in motorway chargers. And no one is more aware than him that what we need desperately on the motorway network is more chargers. Of course, we need many, many more chargers. And we've been working on that as well. And the, the rollout of the electric hubs uh, like uh, Burton and Kendall, Swansea and Exeter already uh, it, it is definitely continuing at a pace. Uh, which is fantastic news for all those people that are saying that you know there isn't enough capacity on the motorway network it seems that the electric hub roller and they're now calling them super hubs as well uh, that, that was another point of note we're going to rename them super hubs um, why do we think they're super because they're able to deliver 100 miles of charge in only five minutes we think that makes them pretty super We've also learned a lot about how we can communicate with the general public. When we talk about things like 350 kilowatts, it doesn't really mean much to many people. People don't really understand the difference between you know, this charger and that charger. Um, but you know, we think that if, uh, if we can give them a name like the Super Hub, people will really start understanding you know, what is this infrastructure and why is it better. The electric four courts are great um, in areas you know, if, if you are in the area where these sites are, they are by uh, hands down the best charging option. But we know that, that motorway charging is needed and, and, and GridServe definitely seem to be on it. Uh, what I would say to, to people is that we need a little bit of patience and you need to remember that what they have achieved so far in less than a year is absolutely remarkable. And they definitely have the passion to, to continue with that and to get us into the position where we need to be. And maybe, maybe just lay off moaning about it just a little bit. Uh, and recognise the effort that these guys are, are, are putting in to make this happen. And I, from what I've seen, I can't think of a better placed organisation to do it. They, they seem to have their priorities in exactly the right place. Whether or not you might think that based on what you might see in the areas that you need to travel to, uh, they, they definitely see the big picture and I think they will get there and they'll probably get there faster than you might think. So I, I, I definitely think things are definitely moving in the right direction and it is absolutely great. So that was the Norwich Electric Forecourt, a very impressive facility and a huge addition to the area. Like many of you, I can't wait to see more of these pop up across the country. I'd like to express a huge thank you and well done to everyone involved at GridServe for making this happen. And I'm sure you'll join me in the comments in recognising just how much effort goes into making this happen. I'd also like to say that I'm extremely grateful for the invite to the launch event and I can't wait to join the next one, which I'm assuming will be at Gatwick, where construction is underway. Thank you very much for watching. If you're new here and you enjoyed this video, please do consider subscribing and I'll see you next time.